Good afternoon. Let's get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please uh, read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Please be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. Okay. Read along with me. You know why? Because I'm fallible and I make mistakes. Read along with me so you can see and hear. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word, the authorized version of the Scriptures. Okay? So please, get the Scriptures, not a Bible. There's a difference. Get the authorized version and read along with me. Come in. Don't trust me. Yeah, you heard me right. Don't trust me. Trust this. The authorized version. Don't trust what I say. Trust what this says. Okay? How many of these tough guy, King James Bible even preachers have the gall to say something like that, huh? Yeah. yeah. You know... There was a secular song who, and brother, don't remind us if you know, leave it alone. I, I don't know. But there was a secular song that had something to do with fornication, I'm sure. But the lyric in the song was, I finally found a reason now I need, ha what was it? I finally found a reason now I need an excuse. I have this something on my hands. You are the one to abuse it. I, I don't know. But I finally found a reason. Now I need an excuse. Reason and excuse. I myself, I myself have said things uh, like, that's not an excuse. It's a reason. And the thing between reason and excuse Christianity really loves to blur that line because uh, men can justify anything through either a reason and excuse anything yes so that is what we are going to be looking at today this is going to be a meat video washed down with his water washed down with a whole lot of milk but see, Christianity has interjected a gray area within this subject. And as saints, as saints, we are capable of doing anything a lost person can do. Absolutely. We're going we're gonna to touch on that today. Okay? But see, here for those of us who are saints, the excuses have got to stop brother look at me yes I'm talking to you brother you got to get some straight now with the Lord brother your excuses have got to stop you have reasons but they have got to stop you see this okay sister Come in. Your excuses have to stop. You can find lots of reasons, but your excuses have to stop. We are going to be looking today at the word reason and also at the word excuse. And with the, the word excuse, and there are many variations thereof, we are going to cover, and it's not that many. Uh, interestingly enough, though, excuse, excused, excusing, excuses, blah, blah, blah. I don't think excuses are is in the scriptures. But every variation of the word excuse is found in the books relegated to the New Testament. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. And there are a whole lot of uh, listings of the word reason. 
over 69 of them. See, and this is another thing. you got to be careful with King James Bible Online. You look at King James Bible Online, it says that reason appears 69 times in the Scriptures. That's the amount of verses, because you'll see with King James Bible Online, it'll say like a word appears four times in the Scriptures, and they'll list the four verses, but within one of those verses, the word appears three times. So you kind of don't get the accuracy as you would with a Strong's Concordance. Okay, but you can still find the word. So be aware of that, okay? Be aware of that. And with reason, we're not going to look at the variations. We are going to look at the word reason itself as with excuse. But like I said, when we're looking at excuse, which only appears within the context of the books relegated onto the New Testament, I say it that way because in the book of Luke, excuse appears first in the book of Luke before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? So we are going to look at this, and we're also going to be referencing Webster here. But see, as I always tell you, when it comes to fi uh, finding out what a word means, start with the perfect standard first. Okay? All right. Now, but before we get to that, we're going to look at some examples, okay? Genesis, and of course, now here's, here's a lot of milk that all you saints ought to have ingrained in your head. Genesis 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. Genesis means beginning, by the way, okay? Genesis 3, verses 1 on to verse 13. Now the serpent, the old, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, this is Satan, okay, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of every garden? <clears throat> and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat it. He said that. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And in this one, the verse is right next to it in Genesis 2. Uh, uh, Genesis 2, verse 17. This one, I mean, it's set up perfectly. <laughs> yeah. But of the tree, Genesis 2, 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Lord God didn't say anything about touching it. Okay, let's continue in Genesis 3. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Every guise of Christianity is exactly verse 5. Every religion out there, its guise starts here in the Genesis. In Genesis, go figure. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? Being your own standard and stuff like that. And when the woman saw... That the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Visual stimuli, like someone imitating some another guy coming out of the woods, wearing the cowboy hat, having the same mannerism, the uh, same vocal inflection, the same vocal patterns, the same manner in speaking, that kind of thing. Visual stimuli, okay? And a tree desired to make one wise, selfish. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Their eyes were open because, number one, they did what God said not to do. Now, for those of you playing the home game, that's called a work. That's a work. You got these idiot free gracers who tell you that it's by grace through faith uh, from the Genesis from beginning to end. 
Uh, no, it's not. That's proof right there. God said, don't do that. They did that. That's a work. Okay, genius. All right. A few of these, by the way, Rabbit, a few of these free gracers, as I understand, have actually started to, a few of them have actually admitted. It's like, okay, yeah. yeah because, I mean, the, the, the free gracer little rabbit for you is counting on your ignorance of Scripture. That's why, why they can get away with these things. So when they come to this, and someone with half a brain is like, wait a minute, dude, that's a work. Apparently there are some, as I understand it, free gracers who are finally admitting the truth. It's like, uh, okay, yeah, in the Garden of Eden, it wasn't by grace through faith. Good for you! That, that's a start! That doesn't justify them wicked filth bag devils at all, but that's a start. It's like they have to admit the obvious there, McFly. So anyway, let's continue. And they heard... <laughs> I love verse 8. I love verse 8. Okay, you Trinitarians. <laughs> okay. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. How does a voice walk? Well, that, that means that it's, you know, they get philosophical, as I understand. They get philosophical. Well, you know, your voice carries, so the voice just walks. Shut up! No. How does a voice walk? Unless there's a body. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what does that mean? They didn't need faith. Why? Because they just... You, you stupid free gracers who, who say that it was it's by grace through faith from the beginning on to the end and you include the Garden of Eden and you say it's by grace through faith and you read Hebrews 11 verse 1 and they saw God and God said not to do that and they did that you 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 stupid idiots you're your uh, from beginning to the end thing trying to justify your sin it's, it's, it just falls apart with anyone who has half a brain to see it okay yeah anyway let's continue <clears throat> And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called on Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Now some like to come to this and say, Well, God doesn't know everything. Yes, he does. See, God was giving Adam here the chance to man up, to confess, to take responsibility. Okay? All right? Remember, woman, you were made for man. Man wasn't made for you. You got a problem with that. You got a problem with God. Okay? I know of some sisters, actual sisters even, that struggle with that. Now granted, you might not have uh, been given a uh, man uh, or been led on to a man of God or whatever. Okay. Okay, is that your excuse? Anyway, let's continue. And he said, verse 11, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Yea, God said, Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? God knew what happened. God was giving Adam the chance to be a man and take responsibility, accountability for what he did. Okay? <laughs> what does Adam do? What does Adam do? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The devil made me do it. Why, what was Adam's reason 
for <laughs> verse 12. Why did he say that? What was the reason? Because he was naked. Well, they were naked at the first. But see, what was his reason? Because they knowingly did contrary to what God said. That was the reason why he said what he said in verse 12. And we see in verse 12 the excuse with the half-hearted partial responsibility, not taking full accountability and responsibility, which we as saints, anyone who is truly saved, is required to do. Which is why easy believism is so dangerous, because you can hide what well, we're all sinners. But like I tell you, with them idiots, it doesn't take much at all. A little scratch, and they, they, it comes out, well, I'm better than so-and-so. I'm sure you think so, sweetheart. Okay? So, <clears throat> Adam's reason was what? Number one, he listened to his wife. And if you read on in Genesis 3, the Lord clearly states that. Because thou hast hearkened unto thy wife. Again, women. Man is to be the head. Not you. That's not, that's the way God designed it. You have a problem with God if you have a problem with that. See, the Lord created woman. Woman means of man. For a very special purpose. But you guys want to be the breadwinners and want to do the things. Good luck. But what was his reason? He sinned. And we see the woman passing the buck, as it is called. The woman whom thou, you, God, gave us to be with me. She did give me of the tree. And he was caught red-handed. It's like, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, I ate. But it was you and her. So that's my excuse. And verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, Why didn't God go to the woman first? The Lord God said unto the woman, And remember, woman means of man. What is this that thou hast done? <laughs> Adam blew it. Okay? Adam blew it. So the Lord's like, <laughs> okay. You, Eve. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. The devil made me do it. And I did eat. We know this type of thing today as reference onto the old man. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. We want verses 39 on to 50. Okay? 1 Corinthians 15. Brethren, I'm not talking to you lost people. You guys, you can make excuses for, for yourselves. All, all you Christians, all you false brethren out there, you, you whatever. I'm talking to us saints. We got, we, see, see, see this? See this? Okay. Okay. See that? We got to stop with the excuses. Stop with the excuses. Stop it. You have reason, sure. But what are you going to do? What excuse are you going to give to the Lord when it counts? Oh, you're right. That might not be today, but you will eventually. The excuses got to stop. Now, there may, okay, very quickly, let's get on this. You're driving somewhere important and your, your tire blows out. Okay, okay. I'll give you that, okay? All right, what happened? What was the reason? My tire blew out. Okay, that's why I'm late. All right, something like that is a little different. But see, most of the time, this thing of excusing 
comes up because we dabble in what? 1 Corinthians 15, 39 on 50. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. That's an interesting verse because uh, pita, uh, not the bread, where you have the uh, gyro meat on there with the tzatziki sauce and the cube. Oh, very good. And the grilled onions, never mind. But, you know, uh, PETA, people, ethical treatment of animals or whatnot, these people who say that uh, animals have just as much more rights as we, uh, man, you know, they try to say, well, all flesh is the same flesh. Evolution! We all have a common ancestor. Uh, no, we have a common designer. Yes, we don't have a common ancestor, you twit. You, we don't. A common designer, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. <clears throat> but a common design, uh, a common ancestor? Woohoo! That's, that, that's your Jesuit education for you, pal. Okay, let's continue. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is the one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. I always get those two confused, which one is which, just so you know, okay? There is one glory of the sun, S-U-N, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. One that is made of dirt. Man has a common ancestor. Yes, Adam and Eve. Not a chimpanzee or a monkey. You, 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 are you smoking that stuff from day to again? Huh? That's, that's so stupid. That's so stupid. Uh, people who spend thousands of dollars to get a piece of paper on their wall, they go to a Jesuit college, and they come out thinking that their ancestor is a monkey. You're stupid. <laughs> I'm not being kind about it. You're stupid if you believe in evolution, okay? All right? Just, just thought I'd mention that. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, it is uh, 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. As so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit, quickening, making alive. And of course, that is reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And for we, mankind, were born, we're in this sagging sin suit that has its foundation from dirt. Yes, we came from our mother's womb, from the matrix. Yes, we did. But we have a common ancestor, Adam and Eve. Eve came of man. Eve, woman, woman of man. That's what that means. Adam was made out of dirt. Okay? You get it? Let's continue. Verse 46. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, Adamic. When you do stuff like that, well, it, if you hadn't have done this, then I wouldn't have done that. Okay? It's your fault that I behaved this way. Now, there are variations. If you're going to come at me with a baseball bat, I am going to defend myself. Okay? Okay? That, okay? That's an extreme example. But most of the time, dear people, dear saints... What? Have you no rule over your own spirit? Hmm? 
uh, as a saint, haven't you figured it out that you haven't you been insulted already by as for being a saint, as being a representative of our Lord Jesus Christ? What's the matter with you, huh? You got you got a thin skin on you, huh? <laughs> the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And this is where we get into the thing of excuses because, like I've told you, saints, saints will try for a while going ground with excuses. But see, a saint who has the Father dwelling within them, sooner or later, sooner, you can come up with all sorts of reasons, but sooner or later, the excuses have to stop. And if they keep coming, after a prolonged period of time, you might have to do some examination of yourself. Anyway, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, unregenerate, the natural man that receiveth not the things of the Lord. Oh, you see this in all of Christianity, basically, and especially within free grace, especially within Catholicism, which free grace is just the daughter of the whore anyway. Okay? You see this also in Pentecostalism. You see this in uh, Baptists, Pentecostals, like I already said, Methodists, whatever, okay? You also see this in Islam, Buddhism, Shintoism, Taoism, whatever ism you is want to come up, I is man. And... As is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. What does that mean? Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's a good definition of what kingdom of God is. Now, there are times in Scripture where kingdom of God can be a reference unto the actual physical, literal kingdom of heaven. Yes, it, there is. But see, again, that is defined by context. You know, okay, here's the meat, and here's the bread, or here's the, uh, what did that little jerk say? Here's the peanut butter and jelly sandwiched between the bread of life. <laughs> okay? Context, bread, meat, lettuce, tomato, bread, context, okay? But this is a very good definition. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. How so? How so? The kingdom of God cometh not from observation, okay? You can't force yourself into the kingdom of God, meaning... The spiritual aspect. Neither can corruption, flesh, inherit incorruption. All flesh is not flesh. Remember, after the death, burial, and resurrection, okay, you know, our Lord and his body after the death, burial, and resurrection, we will get a new body. Okay? All right? All flesh is not flesh. And all flesh is not the same flesh. Excuse me. John 12, John 12, John 12, 24 on to, I can't read my own writing. Oh, on to 25, okay? John 12, 24 and 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit for something new to begin something old has to die the necessity of death see Christianity avoids the death of self they talk about the death burial and resurrection yes they do in the blood yes they do but see there has to be a death of you of your self righteousness and, that, and that's the easiest thing to get, get these idiot free gracers on every time. Without exception. Sooner or later. You, you, you scratch them a little bit. Well, I'm better than so and so. I'm, I'm not that bad. There has to be a death. 
in order to be born again. And that's where the cuteness comes in. Well, being born again is only for the Jews. Remember, Paul didn't talk about it. No, you're right. He only defined it. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. This isn't home. This isn't life. Our life is in Christ. Christ who is our life. Christ who is our hope. Christ who is the resurrection. Jesus Christ who is our salvation. Not your faith in your faith, you wicked devil. Not in the precious little sun-shaped bale cookie. Not that you're in a phallus house every time the door is open. Okay? John 3. John 3. 5 on 8. John 3, 5 on 8. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water. Man born of water. Uh, water breaks with uh, animals as well. Yes, it does. But see, right here, our Lord is telling you specifically who can be saved. Man. Man means mankind. Okay? Woman of man. Mankind. Our Lord is a hey, dude, Fluffy <laughs> can't be saved. Okay? Fido can't be saved. Duke, Fritz, Zena can't be saved. They are a spirit and a body. They don't have a soul. You do the search in scripture about soul. Okay? So, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, natural birth, and of the capitalist spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the capitalist spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, plural, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell, canst not tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the capitalist spirit. Again, to justify themselves and to justify their sins, people will go, like I said, will go to that stupid, well, Paul never taught, said, you know, born again, that was only for the Jews. You're right, he didn't. He only defined what it meant to be born again, you idiot. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Verses 17 on 25. Now, God does not force you at gunpoint to be saved. Calvinist. Neither does the devil force you at gunpoint to stay lost. God at gunpoint doesn't force you to do his will. He, he will make it challenging for you. Oh, he can make your life difficult when you decide to be your own God, even as a saint. But he doesn't force you to do what's right. You have to make the right decision. Likewise, Satan doesn't force you to do anything either. We just kind of looked at it in Genesis 3. Okay? You have to make right choices. You have to make the good choices. And there is none good but who? God. And how do you go about trying to make the right choice? Oh, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Ephesians 4. 17 on to 25. It, you know, it baffles me that people come around 
saying things about, well, God didn't give us free will. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. God, see, God is not a God of coercion. He doesn't force you to do anything. Oh, you reject him and you get his judgment. <laughs> That's a different thing. But see, he doesn't, see, if he did the deciding for you, how genuine would that love be? If God decided for you, made your choice, like saying, uh, it's not your faith. That's so stupid. Or the mind of Christ. You know, we have actual literal mind. Of... <laughs> uh, okay. God is not a God of coercion. Calvinists teach a God of coercion. Free grace teaches a God of coercion. Rome teaches a God of coercion. And what I just mentioned also, they don't have the real God anyway. Most of the time, they're one God in three persons. Okay? Let's continue. This I say, therefore, uh, Ephesians 4, 17 on to 25. This I say, therefore, and testifying the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. <laughs> Save yourself by your own belief. Faith is in your faith, huh? You make a mental decision, huh? Yeah, you idiots. Having the understanding darkened, understanding departing from evil, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. I, I, I recently saw a couple of these uh, wicked Christians in their own little demographic there, and the one guy uh, using the F word, and it's like, I've got... I still have uh, email evidence showing it's like, yeah, that guy never changed because he, he's not saved. I almost sent that to you, brother. Uh, I took a screenshot of what that guy put up there using the F word. And remember, yeah, he, 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 he's a saved man. Yeah, I don't think so. But I almost sent that to you, brother. Uh, one of the emails that I got from a couple years ago, it's like, hey, dude, you, you see <laughs> the same thing that no changes, not saved is... <laughs> Skull and crossbone, but I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay, but let's continue. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Okay. To work all uncleanness with greediness. <laughs> lasciviousness. <laughs> and just as if, I'm writing this down, excuse me. All right. To work all uncleanness with greedy, greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. Especially if you're a Trinitarian. You don't have the right God in the first place. If so that ye have, been, have heard him, how do you hear him? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? And have been taught by him the spirit of truth will guide you in all truth, okay? As the truth is in Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him, okay? That ye put off concerning the former conversation, word, body language, behavior, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and we already touched on that corruption part, in 1 Corinthians 15. Now, verse 22 here is very significant because the putting off something, the making of the right choices. You are sealed. If you come the way of the cross, the required, elect, chosen way of the cross, brokenness of yourself, contrition, being a man, taking responsibility, and having the house scared out of you. See, that, that is a one fell swoop thing. Okay, it's not step one, step two, step three, are you saved, brother? No, that, that brokenness and contrition and fear happens in a fell swoop. And see, in that condition, you can't wait. Ha, save me, Lord, have mercy. And see, people who protest that haven't been through that, they're not saved. Understand? Okay? And you are made a new creature. Yes, you are. 
a new creature. Why are you a new creature? Because God the Father dwells in you. But God in you is not at gunpoint going to force you to make the right decisions. Okay? Just because God the Father dwells within you does not remove your free will. Okay? I'll give you this. It would be nice if sometimes it wasn't so, wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be great if sometimes our free will weren't in the for in the equation, wouldn't it? But then again, we would be a mechanical. We would be a machine. We would have a robot. We would be a robot programmed to do something without our free will. Okay? Let's continue. All right. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away Making the right choices. Wherefore, putting away lying. Uh, just believe and receive is a lie. God to belong to Christ's church that he founded is a lie. Okay? <laughs> uh, evidence of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues is a lie. Okay? Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Okay? And 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 on to 21. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5, 17 on to 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. How are you a new creature? How are you a new creature? Christ is in you. God the Father. You are sealed in, onto the day of redemption. You're a new creature because God dwells in you. It, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Why? Because who you were before the Lord saved you is now gone because you have the Lord within you. But still, see, that doesn't absolve you from having to make the right choices. Be careful with that. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We're all saints involved in the ministry of reconciliation. There are different positions within that. Okay, men are to be the preachers and teachers. Deal with it. Okay, let's continue. To wit, that God was in Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, reconciling the world unto himself, and uh, not everyone's going to be saved, like the stupid universalist likes to say, all right, not everyone uh, going to be saved. This is one that they like to come to and say, well, everybody's saved. And, and no, that's not true. Okay? Universalist idiots. Okay? To it that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. <laughs> okay. Ambassador, you claim to be a saved individual, but yet you publicly put the F bomb in one of your thing and uh I should have taken the screenshot because knowing you, you'll take that down to hide your tracks. Okay, with the evidence of those offensive emails that you sent to many people where you say the same thing F off as you did in the other thing. I mean what more proof does anyone who know to show that you're lost. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you're God. Satan loves you, pal. Okay. 
Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. And again, look at the free gracer. Look at that, look at that whole group. No, don't. But I'm just using it as an example. That whole group that is relegated with the like the praises that he isn't and that that uh, that imbecile uh, dude or whatever his name is. That guy's an idiot. Just like Jack Smack and all that group, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's no wonder that sweet little Franklin is uh, part of that thing too. It, it's like that. Yeah, you're you. Yeah, you are an ambassador to your Christ, that man of sin, the son of perdition, but not the Christ who is. And remember, those guys, their Christ is one in three persons, not the true God to begin with. You know, at least that uh, devil-possessed looking kid uh, from needgod.net, at least he had a semblance of some kind of righteousness, self-righteousness, of course, because, you know, he, we, the, the, the video about that little pond scum devil uh, <laughs> will uh, put an exorcist in there to remember. will be in the description box for you to see, okay? But remember, the way you serve God reflects him. Hey, you got these Christians dropping F-bombs, putting these things out. Yeah. Yeah, no shame. No shame. They're not new creatures. Safe people can do the same thing, but you know what? There's got to be, I mean, a safe person be like, huh. you know? <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And see, free gracers give you this idea that the way you serve doesn't matter. Same with someone who, just like he did several years ago, with the everyone to F off. Like I said, brother, I almost sent you the video, the video, um, the pictures, the screenshots just like, hey, dude, okay, is this enough for you to realize this dude is not saved? <laughs> Distance, stay away. Uh, treat that as pungent dung. It's like, Ugh, don't want to be by that. Okay. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. And here's what no lost coadjutor, free gracer, Catholic, or most Christians, here's what they don't understand. They can't because they're not new creatures. God does not dwell within them. Remember, if you're a staunch believer in the Trinity and defender, you don't have the right God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay? Now, here's some examples of what we're getting at. Okay, these are just some basic examples here. Exodus chapter 4. Okay? Exodus chapter 4. Uh, not Genesis. Exodus chapter 4. We looked at the Genesis, the beginning. Now, what was Adam's reason for what, doing what he did? He, he sinned. Okay? God gave him a work to do. He blew it. Okay, they saw God. What was his reason? And his excuse was, the woman in you. Okay? Exodus chapter 32. And this, this one's brilliant. This one's brilliant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this one is absolutely brilliant. Okay? Exodus 32. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Moses goes up. To get the Ten Commandments. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. And said unto him. Up make us gods. Which shall go before us. For as for this Moses. The man that brought us up out of Egypt. We what. What not. What has become of him. What was the reason. You know, and Moses. Where was Moses? So, what was their excuse? 
to go to Aaron. Make us gods. What was the reason? Well, where's Moses? <laughs> and Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. See, in verse 2, Aaron already blew it. Aaron should have been. What, what's wrong with that? Hey, come here, come here, come here. What's wrong with you? But he didn't. Let's continue. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it. After, note this language, this wording. After he had made it a golden, a molten calf. Singular calf. One calf. Not calves. Calf. Singular. One. And look what he says. O Israel. Oh, these be thy gods, O Israel. God's plural. One calf, God's plural. Mm. Remember, the satan this satanic trinity had its inception in Babylon. What was it? Nimrod, Semiramis, and Ninus? Remember, the, the name Semiramis is not in Scripture. You're right. But uh, the Queen of Heaven is. Okay. And Ninus isn't in Scripture either. You're right. But Tammuz is. Okay. Just, just remember. Okay. Yeah. These be thy gods, plural, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play like little kids. Verses 7 and 8. The Lord said unto Moses, Get thee down. For thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed unto it and said, These be thy gods. Plural. Look what the Lord said. A molten calf singular. singular. Our father said that. And these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. God the Father hates the Trinity. God the Father is against the Trinity. Okay? Good, uh, good verse for you there, right there. Okay, you Trinitarian. Now let's skip a little to verses 19 on to verse 24. What was the reason why the people wanted Aaron to make a golden calf because they didn't see Moses they also used that as an excuse we want not what has become of him where's Moses we don't know what's become of him so make us gods verses 19 on to verse 24 and it came to pass as soon as Moses comes down flips out literally smashes the Ten Commandments Okay? And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands, and brake them beneath the mount. The tables, the Ten Commandments on tables of stone, written by the finger of God, and Moses brake them. <laughs> Talk about the oldest and best, huh? Yeah, let's continue. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. <laughs> Hold on to your hats. Okay? And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat out of, huh? But unlike God, 
Moses, you know, Moses was like, what? Look at the verse. Okay? Look at the verse. What did this people do? What did this people want to thee? Okay? Similar, but remember, God knew what happened and was looking for a confession. Moses is here. It's like, dude, what, what happened? Okay? Similar, but different. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. Now, as has been brought up in conversation among saints, it's like, well, Aaron was probably, you know, he was outnumbered. And that it has been brought up, well, what about um, if Aaron was afraid of the people? And, of course, the fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. And they might, they may have well, if Aaron was like, uh, dude, what, what, what's wrong, Joe? Come here, come here. What, what, what? No, no, I, no, no, repent, no. And they killed him. Oh, boy, well, could you imagine what if Aaron had done that and they killed him? Oh, boy. <laughs> all the interceding of Moses might not have helped, huh? Okay, that's here nor there. That's, you know, yeah, that's not what happened. But think about that. What if Aaron had, in that moment, been like, Stop! No! Uh-uh! We ain't playing this! You need to repent of that. Mo, he's up there doing whatever. He will be back. You chill! We ain't playing this! What if Aaron had done that? Okay, what if Aaron was afraid of him? And they killed him. Oh, oh, Lord's like, okay, uh, they just killed your brother. All right, you, you, you get away. I'm gonna kill these people. Okay, of course that's conjecture. We don't know because that's not what happened. But the point is, Aaron had a chance. Aaron had a chance. What does Aaron do? Brilliant, brilliant. And as we saw. In Exodus chapter 3 here. All right. Um, verse 4. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. After he had made it a molten calf. Aaron clearly formed this thing. Now. Verse uh, 22. And Aaron said. Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of, wot not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. <laughs> you know, Aaron, that, that, that was brilliant. <laughs> that, that was bad. Okay. That, that, that was bad. That was bad. Like, poof, here it is. <laughs> oh, it just happened. Maybe you read verse 4. But now, this is Aaron. In a dispensation when there was no eternal security, and the Holy Ghost didn't dwell in someone permanently. Big difference, okay? Got to rightly divide the word of truth. But the thing remains the same. Aaron took responsibility after he blamed the people. After he did what? Blamed the people. And then when he had cast it into the fire just by chance, out comes this calf. Now what was Aaron's reason for doing what he did? You can you could say okay maybe he was afraid, but there again, the fear of man brings a snare. Even so, okay. What was his reason? He was outnumbered. Sure, he was afraid. Okay, fear of man bringing a snare. But see, did Aaron's like okay look I I shouldn't have done that I messed it up. No, what did Aaron do? You know the people, the people, the people. And then I, 
And then it's like, to, hey, hey, these guys could kill me, okay? Okay, the people, the people, the people. Give me the gold. Give me the gold. And whoop, here comes this calf. It was his reason. And you see his excuse. Huh. And now the obvious. The obvious, which when we're addressing this subject, we've addressed it before, yes, but you're only as relevant, relevant as your latest video unless you're a saint. Okay? <laughs> All right? Uh, 1 Samuel 13. 1 Samuel 13. You, when talking about this subject, this has to be addressed. 1 Samuel 13, 800 verse 14. King Saul. Uh, Samuel said to Saul, wait until I show up. And he tarried seven days according to Saul. He, and he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offering, offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering as on cue, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. He's saying, have you ever done something that you know you shouldn't have done uh, because you were impatient or whatever your excuse was, and then immediately after doing it, what you were waiting for came to pass? Have you ever experienced that saint? How'd that make you feel after it's like, oh, <clears throat> how'd that make you feel? You couldn't take a hot shower and uh, lather yourself up with enough lava soap to get that scum feeling off of you, can you? Fred a little? Fret a little? Fruits of fretting? Huh? You see this? See this? <laughs> huh? How'd that make you feel, huh? And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, the Phil look at this, man. <laughs> Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal. And I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself. Therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you sure did, didn't you? Oh, look at all those. What was his reasons? He gave them. And what was his excuse? We see it. You, them, 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 you. I forced myself. The excuses have got to stop. Yeah, sometimes they're legitimate ones. Yeah, it's like your tire blows out. Hey, hey, man, tire blew out. Okay, that's what the reason is. The tire blew out. That's my excuse. Sorry. Okay. You just to find something sinful. Well, if you've been through what I've been through, it's their fault that I'm doing the way, what, you have no rule over your own spirit? Shut up. Shut up. You man. You man. Don't be like Adam, the first man. <clears throat> and Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, acted as if you say in your heart there is no God. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And of course, while we're in Samuel, 
Samuel 15. 13 on the 23. Gotta have, gotta, gotta touch on that. Gotta touch on that. 13 to 23. God said, go kill the Amalekites. And, and uh, atheist is like, your God had the, the uh, Amalekites killed. Oh, you can do better, huh? Yeah, you can do better, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You're better than God. You can do better, huh? Well, you're justifying abortion and sodom, might marriages and giving poison to people. Yeah, you can do better, huh? Yeah. God said kill all the Amalekites. Kill everything. They did. And remember, Saul was the king. He was the head of the people. Everything, you know, it starts at the pyramid, okay? Uh, the tip of the pyramid, right? Okay. Um, he was responsible. And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. No, he didn't. Right away, Samuel, with a guilty conscience, trying to justify himself. I did what the Lord said. I, I have done the commandments of the Lord. Why did Saul say that? Because he knew that he didn't. Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I, uh, which I hear? And Saul said, distancing himself, he was the king, he was the captain, he was the big kahuna, he was responsible, but distancing himself from the responsibility. It's like we want to be in charge, but when it comes to taking responsibility, the distance thing, that's the old man. That's Adamic. Okay? And Saul said, they have brought them from, Emla, uh, from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. The rest we have utterly look, look, look at that. Okay? I command, I did the commandment of the Lord. I'm, I'm okay. The people did this. And then we destroyed the rest. The distancing. This, 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 is, this is classic. I mean, you need to study this. And when you, are, when you know about this, and you can see it in even saints. You know, I, 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 I owe it to brethren who, in whom I see this present to call them on it. And I haven't before in the past. Any one of you brethren and sisters who I have conversed with or had correspondence with, and I have not rebuked you when I have seen this present, please forgive me that wrong. I repent. That is part of the calling. And, uh, you know, I don't want to hurt people's feelings, but you know what? I can't care about your feelings. I care about the Lord. And when I see this resident in a saint, and, hey, I've had saints, when they see a resident in me a little, they're like, Brad, it's like, yeah, you're right. But then again, a sin can only go so far before they, where else will we go? Forgive me that wrong, brethren and sisters. It's going to happen again. I see it in you. Or hear it in you. I'm going to get on your rear end about it. The more I love you, the less I be loved, huh? Whatever. Hmm. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said, Samuel, uh, Saul, and he said unto him, say on. He's like, oh, say on. I want to hear it. Thinking he's in the clear. Samuel said, when thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go utterly destroy the sinners of the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the so, uh, spoil, and did, didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Justification. His excuse. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and I have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agat. No, you, you went the way he sent, but you didn't do what he said to do. And have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. No, you didn't, because there's Agag. 
See the warped mind there when you're trying to justify sin? Okay? But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, the sacrifice on the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Lord thy God. He, he's, uh, Saul's drowning. <laughs> okay? And it's pathetic. <clears throat> Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, it is better to obey, it is better, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Obviously, because what is the idol? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yeah. Ye shall be like the Most High, right? You save yourself by your own belief, right? You belong to the church that Christ founded. Uh, you're at church every time the doors are open. You're elect because of your skin color, right? Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. <laughs> what was Saul's reason? We've seen it. What was his excuse? The people, the people. Why was it? What was his reason? He knew he had sinned. He knew. I had done what the uh, commandment of the Lord. No, he didn't. He knew it. What was his reason? To cover his own backside. What was his excuse? They did it. But yeah, I did it though. Again, I owe some of you an apology because um, I've seen that in some saints and I haven't pounced on it. And I expect you to do that to me if you see it in me. But yet I didn't do it to you. Forgive me, saints. I repent of that. You really want to talk to me now? <laughs> Twenty-four and twenty-five. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words. Good, right? You're right. <laughs> because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Well, that was the reason. He's using it as an excuse. See, drop that part of it. David, I have sinned. When uh, Nathan, it's like, thou art the man. Nathan, I've sinned. And I've done this wickedness. There was no with David after Nathan rebuked him. There was none because I, see, Saul is still pointing to somebody else. Still making an excuse. Oh, sure, he admit he had to. He had to. Then what was he going to do? He had to, but he still clung to, and it was done too. See, that's what needs to go. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin and turn again, that I may worship the Lord. Sounds good, but ultimately what was Saul's reasoning? Fear of man bringeth a snare. Whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made safe. Uh, look at verse 30. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people. Now, he was the king. He was responsible, but he was more concerned with how the people saw him. When David, with the, uh, the sin that he did with Bathsheba, and he was before the uh, uh, fasting uh, and asking the Lord, hey, save this kid, okay? Did David, was David concerned with how he looked? In front of his people? No. He was more concerned with how the Lord saw him. You get it? Yet 
Honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people, and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God. Don't miss, miss, don't miss that. And of course Samuel did. What was Saul's reason? What was his excuse? I'm leaving that to you to answer. How can you not see it? That's Old Testament, Brad! That's Old Testament. For that very resurrection, right, Brad? Acts 21. Oh, yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our beloved Paul. You know, Paul had a pride problem. He was given a thorn in his flesh to keep him humble. Paul had a pride problem. Show it to you? Okay. Acts 21, 8 on to verse 14. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Contrast between 1 Samuel 13, 8 and 14. Acts 21, 8 and on to verse 14. Mm -hmm. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Sisera. And we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. One. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him, Paul, not to go up to Jerusalem. Two. The mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Verse 13. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready, not for I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And Paul, oh, oh yeah, Paul meant it. See. And again, Acts 21, Acts 21 here, okay. Which eventually, because of this, because of Paul's pride, led him into inevitable compromise. Okay? All right? I love Paul. Our dear brother Paul, the greatest of the saints, the church of God. See, you, you, you got to understand Romans 7, brethren. I tell, I tell saints who I talk to and, uh, and counsel, uh, you know, when they're, you know, getting on themselves and with sin, you need to read Romans 7. You need to understand Romans 7. You need to spend a lot of time in Romans 7. Okay? But anyway, let's, let's continue. And when he would not be persuaded. Stubbornness? Oh, Paul was a stubborn man. Paul had a pride problem. I remember Sam Spit uh, said, I don't have a pride problem. <sighs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> anyone, who, anyone who has the stones to say that, oh, I don't have a pride problem. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? You do. You just proved it. It's like these people who say, oh, I don't sin anymore. You did two sins right there, Jack. You lied, and you're full of pride, okay? Anybody, well, or even, I don't think I have a pride problem. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. You just demonstrated it, okay? Or, I'm not a sinner. I don't think I'm a sinner. <sighs> okay? And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. Um... Okay, what was Paul's reason for doing this? What was his excuse? Look in Acts 20. 
verses I can't read my own writing. Uh, uh, Acts 20, verses 22 and verse 24. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Now in Acts 21, we saw Agabus and the rest of the people, too, say to Paul, hey, maybe you shouldn't be going to Jerusalem. Agabus is like, hey, who's ever uh, belt this is, they're going to do to the owner of this belt, Paul's belt or Paul's girdle. And then the people are like, uh, hey, Paul, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't go to Jerusalem, too. Save, Acts 20, verse 23. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth witnesseth in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. So that can encompass at least he says in every city the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. You know God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ the Lord was saying Paul oh, don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go. Well, he, he didn't say not to go. Are you stupid? Are you stupid? I love you. Are you stupid? Are you are you trying to justify yourself there? Well, it doesn't say not to go. Okay, the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds, bonds and afflictions abide thee. Agabus, uh, who's ever going to go there, who's ever girl this is, they're going to be bound. The people, finally, uh, hey, don't go to Jerusalem. Come on, come on, come on, stop. Just, just, uh, just, just stop. Okay. See, you running through that kind of reasoning, you're aligning yourself up with the antinomianist. That's a free grace. Okay? Stop it. Stop it. You, 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 you're, you're going to begin to drown like Saul did. Okay? But none of these, verse 24, but none of these move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. What was his reason for all this? Look at verse 16. For Paul, in, verse, in chapter 20, for Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. That was his reason. And it was also his excuse. Paul had a pride problem. He was bound and determined, but yet the Lord warned him at least, it says in every city, at least three occasions. I mean, with every city, how many cities did he go through? The Lord was like, you know, you go to Jerusalem, it's not going to be well for you. Well, he was, uh, the people's like, don't go. But Paul's like, why are you breaking my heart? Paul had a pride problem. Uh, ultimately, ultimately, we can safely say that it was not the Lord's will that Paul go to Jerusalem. Uh, if Paul hadn't have done this, this wouldn't have been there. But had, And this is a redundant thing, but to think about it, what if Paul's like, okay, I'm not going to go? The Lord would have gotten him to Rome in a different way. The Lord used it. I, I, amen, absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, he did, but um, the Lord would have had him go another way. What was Paul's reason? What was his excuse? The excuse was a good excuse. But we see clearly that obviously was not the Lord's will for him to go there. Now, Genesis 41, reason. Genesis 41. Very first appearance of any form of reason. Reason, reasonable, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Very first appearance. Genesis 41, 29 out of 36. <clears throat> Behold, there comes, and this is Joseph and Pharaoh, okay? Behold, there comes seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, 
and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. There's the first appearance of any connotation of the word reason. Look at how it's used. By reason of that famine. There's a famine in the land. People are not hearing the words of the Lord. That, that's from Amos 8, obviously. That will be fulfilled during the time of Jacob's trouble. But today we see a variation of it. People are not hearing the words of the Lord. They're not even hearing a Bible. Great example that that exorcist kid um, got net, you know, who looks like that cult leader uh, did that in the community section. You know, that kid didn't even use, uh, didn't even quote a Bible. Okay, let's continue now. A little bit more context. And for that dream, and for that the dream was doubled onto Pharaoh twice. It is because. The thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now, hey, brother, in the one, uh, in the one that uh, the brother gave me, Pharaoh has the line over the A and the O. Here, 32, there's no line over both the A and the O. The pronunciation key is different. Check Cambridge. This is, a, this is the Thompson. Okay, but a different pronunciation key. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and send him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. Okay, that was a little bit more than we needed, but giving it the context, in verse 31... Reason of that famine. First appearance. Okay? Exodus. Exodus 2. Verses 23 and 20, on to verse 25. Exodus 2. 23 on to 25. Okay? And it came to pass in... Now, we're not... there. Are, I've skipped some. I mean... Because the word reason appears in 69 verses, according to King James Bible Online. But more than that, 69 plus with the word itself. We are looking at selected things of this usage of the word. Because there's another time that reason, I believe it's in Genesis 47, appears in Genesis. We're looking at selected, okay? Just so you know. Uh, Exodus uh, 2, 23 and 25. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. Okay? And they cried. And their cry came up unto God by reason twice. But, and see, it's only listed as one in, in King James Bible Online. But... The word appears twice, okay? By reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob, the patriarchs. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And God had respect unto them. Exodus 3, 7 out of 10. And the Lord said, I have seen, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. 
And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land onto a good land and a large, onto a land flowing with milk and honey, onto the place of the, oops, oops, onto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites, uh, Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Again, we see reason. Okay? Numbers 18. Numbers 18. 8 on the 19. Numbers 18. Reason in any variation does not appear in Le uh, Leviticus. Oh wait, no, I might be wrong about that one. But the singular of reason. The singular of reason. Singular. The base of reason. Reasons. Reasoned. Reasonable. Reasoning. The base is reason. The singular of reason does not appear in Leviticus. Excuse me. Uh, numbers 18. Numbers 18, 8 on the 19. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Behold, I also have given thee the charge of mine heave offerings, of all the hallowed things of the children of Israel. Unto thee have I given them by reason of the anointing, and to thy sons by an ordinance forever. This shall be thine of the most holy things, reserved from the fire, Every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs, and every sin offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me, shall be most holy for thee and for thy sons. Remember, uh, the Levites had no physical inheritance, but they had inheritance within the cities, allotted to them of the children of Israel. Why was that? Because the Lord was their inheritance. Okay? All right? They were allotted cities within Judah and within Naphtali and stuff like that. They were allotted uh, cities, but they were not given their own specific land inheritance besides cities within the inheritance of the children of Israel. Why? Because the Lord was their inheritance and Levitical priests were to have part of the actual offerings on, on to the Lord as part of what they got from the Lord. Okay? Hold on. In the most holy place shalt thou eat it. Every male shall eat it. Eat it. it shall be holy unto thee. And this is thine, the heave offering of their gift. With all the wave offerings of the children of Israel, I have given them unto thee, and to thy sons, and to thy daughters with thee, by a statute forever. Every one that is clean in thy house shall eat of it. Hold your place here. Just a real quick reference. Okay? And uh, where is that? 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. A lot of people like to dispute this, but this is a legitimate thing. And remember, Paul chose not to. What am I talking about? 1 Corinthians 9. Four, uh, 13 out of 14. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel, not off the gospel. And you see too many of these King James Bible even Christian preachers living off the gospel, not of the gospel. There is a difference. You read 1 Corinthians 9. And 2 Corinthians 9. Coincidentally, I think not. Okay? There is a place for those who preach and teach to live of the gospel. Okay? There is. All right? Okay? Some have disputed that. Okay? Some have disputed that. But scripturally, that is legit. Oh, there's a lot like Kent Helvin, who's not even saved. Several other people out there who live off the gospel, 
who rub in your face all the time. If this, if this message has been a blessing unto you, consider, okay, there is a legitimate place for that. But when you, in every single thing that you, in every single thing that you do, give to my ministry, give, the Lord rebuke you. Yes, there is a place for that. Amen. But when you're doing it all the time, every single time, every single thing that you do, again, immediately, Ken Helvin comes to mind. With his little crook thing in his mouth. If this has been a blessing to you, give to this ministry. Guy's a Jesuit. He's lost. He's proven himself over time that he's a lost man. Back to uh, Numbers, okay? Verse 12. All the best of the oil, and all the best of the wine, and all the and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord, them have I given thee. Whatsoever is first ripe in the land, which they shall bring unto the Lord, shall be thine. Everyone that is clean in thine house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Israel shall be thine. Everything that opened the matrix in all flesh, which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of men or of beasts, shall be thine. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shalt thou surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts shalt thou redeem. And those that are that are to be redeemed from a month old shalt thou redeem according to thine estimation. For the money of five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty geras. But the firstling of a cow, or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar, and shalt burn their fat for an offering made by fire, for a sweet savor unto the Lord. And the flesh of them shall be thine, as the wave breast and as the right shoulder are thine. All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord have I given thee, and thy sons and thy daughters with, with thee by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever between the Lord unto thee and to thy seed with thee. Why? By reason of the anointing. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. The Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident in the believer during this time period. It was not by grace through faith. It was faith and works. Okay? Alright? And now Deuteronomy 5. 1 on 6. Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5. 1 on 6. Deuteronomy 5, verses 1, on to verse 6. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, Israel, excuse me, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn, I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb, Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even with us, who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to shew you the word of the Lord, for ye were afraid by reason of the fire, and went not up on into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And then if you continue reading, he gives a reciting of the Ten Commandments. But by reason of the fire. Reason. Okay? All right? You see that? Now, 1 Samuel 12. 1 Samuel 12. 1 Samuel 12. Verses 1 on to verse 15. Okay? We, we, we read scripture. That's what this is about. As I told you at the beginning. Don't believe me. Don't trust me. Trust this. Okay? And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice and all that ye said unto me. 
and have made a king over you. Now behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed, and behold, my sons are with you, which weren't really that great anyway, okay? And I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am. Witness against me before the Lord, and before his anointed, whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind bribe, to blind mine eyes therewith, and I will restore it you. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken aught of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. Hmm. Now we see reason there being used in a different way, don't we? Because by reason of the fire, by reason of a dead body, by reason of the plague, let's reason. Okay? And when they, okay, when Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Lord, then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot the Lord their God, he sold them into the hand of Sisera, captain of the, the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they, fought, and they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and have served Baalim. Baal, Baalim. And Ashtaroth. But now, Deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. See, this is uh, Samuel reasoning with the people. Okay? And, the, and we will serve thee. Verse 11. And the Lord sent Jerabal, Jerabal, and Bedan, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelt safe. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, he said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us. When the Lord your God was your king. They wanted the visual stimuli. Now therefore behold, the king whom ye have chosen, and whom ye have desired, and behold, the Lord has set a king over you. Get your pen. Circle this. If ye will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection, under the law, faith, and works. Eternal security was not there. Okay? It was not by grace through faith. It was faith and works. Okay? And obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord. Then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue, following the Lord your God. But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers. Uh, that was Samuel reasoning with the people by giving them cold hard facts. Okay, also Job 13, 1 unto 8. Like I said, these are not all the appearances. These are selected. Uh, do, uh, check it out for yourself, okay? Job 8, no, Job 13, excuse me. Job 13, 1 unto 8. Job 13, verses 1 unto verse 8. Lo, mine eye hath seen all this. Mine ear hath heard 
and understood it. What ye know, the same do I know also. I'm not inferior unto you. Surely I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with God. But ye are forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. Oh, that ye would altogether hold your peace, and it should be your wisdom. Yeah, shut up! Job's three friends, they spake truth, but yet they accused Job. You know, when someone's going through something, the ministry of presence, I know that. Ministry of presence is not in Scripture. I know that. But, you know, sometimes when someone's going through something, uh, sometimes, as a saint, one of the best things you can do is just sit there and be with them. Just sit there. Look at them. Sit there. Be with them. And shut up! Sometimes that's the best thing you and I can do as saints. Is to keep our mouth shut. And when someone's going through something, we, we especially as men, we're fixers. We want to fix things. But sometimes you know, it's like, okay, here's a brother who just lost, like Joe, lost everything. Be there with him. Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Keep your mouth shut. Sometimes, brother, sister, I'm telling you, Especially like if you lose someone, I mean, especially if they, you lose someone and they go to hell, or they, they lost their house, or they lost their pet, okay, or whatever. Just shut up. Just be there. Just be there. Do you good, okay? Hear now my reasoning, and hearken to the pleadings of my lips. Will ye speak wickedly for God and talk deceitfully for him? Will ye accept his person? Will ye contend for God? Hmm. Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. The fool's proverb. Proverbs 26. 12 on the 16. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool who says in his heart there is no God than him. An antinomianist who has deceived themselves in believing they're saved because they just believed without any brokenness or contrition or fear but just walking along, flip a switch, I believed and therefore I'm saved. They make a mental decision. There is more hope of someone who says in their heart, there is no God than of him. And those of you who are messed up with that sleazy believers garbage, um, that ought to scare the hell out of you. Let's continue. The slothful man saith, there's a line in the way. A lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth a slothful, so doth the slothful upon his bed. Some people don't want to take a deep look at themselves. That's why a lot of people will resort to just believe and receive. Because you know when the Lord gets a hold of you and he brings you to this book. And you are brought to the road of the Romans road. That hurts. So much easier just to forgo all that. Say, oh, prayer is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is work. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's so much easier just to believe and receive and go about your way. And uh, be two more fold, twofold more the child of hell than the one who told you. Yeah. <clears throat> the slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom, it grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. <laughs> and what does it say? The slothful man saith, uh, what is it? Uh, verse 12, seest thou, seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than, his, than him. Wise in his own conceit. 
I have a reason. Now all I need is an excuse. If you've been through what I've been through, what's your reason? Whatever it is. So you're going to use that as your excuse to get involved in sin and to justify yourself. And Isaiah chapter 1, a uh, personal favorite uh, verse, one of my personal favorite verses uh, or things. Uh, Isaiah 1. That song of Solomon. Come on. <laughs> Isaiah 1, 16 on the 20. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Different dispensation, faith and works. Eternal security was not there. Death, burial, and uh, resurrection hadn't happened. The bloodshed on the cross hadn't happened. They were not looking forward to the cross. Okay? Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Those are works. Faith and works under the law. Come now and let us reason together. Which will be in the description box for you. Along with time to wake up. Set the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now, from dear old Webster. Ah, oh, reason. According to Webster's 1828 dictionary. Ah, uh, reason. Um, I can't even read. Well, um, Gothic. Okay, reason. Uh, see, you see here, there's all this stuff right here before the first definition. I'm going to skip that, okay? Number one, that which is thought or which is alleged in words as the ground or cause of opinion, conclusion, or determination, I have reasons which I may choose not to disclose. You ask me my reasons. I freely give you my reasons. The judge assigns good reasons for his opinion, reasons which justify his decision, hence in general. Two, the cause, which we have seen in Scripture. Number one, we already saw. Let us reason together. And number two, the cause, ground, principle, or motive of anything said or done, that which supports or justifies a determination, plan, or measure. Virtue and vice are not arbitrary things, but there is a natural and eternal reason for that goodness and virtue against vice and wickedness. 1 Peter 3, till the sun... Hmm. That's obviously a commentary, not a quote of scripture. 3. Efficient cause. He is detained by reason of sickness. Spain is thrown is thin sown of people, partly reason, partly by reason of its sterility of soil, bacon. The reason of the motion of the balance in a wheel watch is by motion of the next wheel hail. Four, final cause. Reason in the English language is sometimes taken for true and clear principles. Sometimes for clear and fair deductions. Sometimes for the cause, particularly the final cause. Lock. Five. A facility, a faculty of the mind by which it distinguishes truth from falsehood and good from evil, and which enables the professor to, declude, to, declude, to deduce interferences from facts or from propositions. 
uh, encyclopedia. Um, uh, bring forth your strong reasonings, it says in Isaiah, which we did not look at, okay? But Self-love, the spring of motion, acts the soul. Reasons comparing balance rules the whole that sees an immediate good by present sense. Reason, the future, and the consequence. Pope. Ugh. Reason is the director of man's will. Hooker. Raticationage, whatever, the exercise of reason. By when, but when by reason she, the truth, has found Davis. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Uh, right, justice, that which is dictated or supported by reason. Every man claims to have reason on his side. I was promised on a time to have reason by rhyme. Spencer, reason by rhyme. Interesting. Hey, reason, reasonable claim, justice. God brings good out of evil, and therefore it were by reason we should trust God to govern his own world, his own world, Taylor. Rationale, just to count. This reason did the ancient fathers render why the church was called Catholic. Oh boy. Oh boy. Woo. Uh, Pearson. Moderation. Moderate demands, claims, which reason and justice admit or prescribe. The most probable way of bringing France to reason would be by the making an attempt on the Spanish West Indies, Addison. In reason, in all reason, in justice, with rational ground. When anything, when anything is proved by a good argument, when anything is proved by as good arguments as a thing of that kind of capable of. We ought not to reason to doubt of its existence. Tiltison. Ana again, another reason. VI, um, whatever. To exercise the facility of reason, to deduce interfer inferences justly from premise, premises, brutes do not reason. Children reason imperfectly. When I was a child, I thought as a child, but when I was became a man, I put away childish things. Two, to argue, to infer conclusions from premises, or to deduce new or unknown propositions from previous propositions, which are known or evident, to reason justly, is to infer from propositions which are known, admitted or evident, the conclusions which are natural or which necessarily result from them. Men may reason within themselves. They may reason before a court or legislature. They may reason wrong as well as right. Three, to debate, to confer or inquire by discussion or mutual communication of thoughts, arguments, or reasons. And they reason among themselves, Matthew XVI, to reason with, to argue with, to endeavor, to inform, convince, or persuade by argument, reason with a profligate son, and if possible, persuade him of his errors. Come, let us reason together, you and I, okay? To discourse, to talk, to take, or give an account. Stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord. Which we already looked at, of all the righteous acts of the Lord. First Samuel XII, which we already looked at. Another reason. To examine or discuss by uh, verb transitive. So verb uh, intransitive. Verb transitive, reason, uh, I'm assuming noun, reason, or whatever. That's what he says in that part I didn't read. To examine or discuss by arguments, to debate or discuss 
I reason the matter with my friend. When they are clearly discovered, well digested, and well reasoned in every part, there is beauty in such a theory, Burnett, to persuade by reason of argument as to reason one into a belief of truth, to reason out of his plan, to reason down a passion. Then it goes into reason. But that's what our beloved Webster said of reason, which we saw defined in Scripture already. But he, he goes a little bit more. And that they remember, remember, our beloved Mr. Webster botched it on many occasions. Mr. Webster, I think, was a Calvinist. Catholic, that reference of Catholic. Okay? That's what Webster said. But see, where did we start first? Scripture. Now, excuse. As I said at the beginning of this video, the word excuse and all the variations appear in the books allotted to the New Testament. I say that because of Luke 14. Luke 14. And we are going to look at every variation of the word excuse, excused, excusing, that kind of stuff. We're going to look at every single one of them. Okay? Luke 14, 16 on to 24. And within what we're looking at, we're going to see excused used twice. Okay? So we're going to kill uh, two birds with one stone. Luke 14, 16 on to 24. Then said he unto them, unto him, Excuse me. A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. Okay? Why did the servant at supper time say to them that were bidden, Come? Okay? Because a great man made a supper. What, what was his reason? He's like saying, Come! For all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. Why won't you consider the gospel of Jesus Christ? You got time. I want to live a little. You're dying. You're not living. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. And I pray, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. One of the two appearances of excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Number two. So, piece of ground, earth, such as the earthly, such are of the earth. Earthly. This wisdom is earthly, sensual, devilish, okay? Of the earth, okay? Yoke of oxen. Gotta go prove them. How do you prove a yoke of oxen? Plowing the ground. I pray thee have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Why isn't your wife with you? Choosing flesh. Okay? And the Lord said, if someone loves their wife or um, loves their wife more than me or the, uh, whatever, not worthy of me. I just bradized that, but let's continue. So the servant came and shewed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And they began to make excuse. I got time. I don't want to do that now because because they because most people genuine genuinely 
and generally know that, hey, if the Lord saves me, something's going to change, at least. Why? Because you're made a new creature if you go the way he has elected. There's the first appearance of excuse. And in context of earthly things, carnal things, ground, oxen to plow the ground, a wife, a woman, flesh. So excuse, excuses. Excuses have things to do with worldliness, in a way. Or earthly things, doesn't it? Oh, 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 oh. Ro oh right, I love this one. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. <laughs> Romans chapter 1. Verses 18 on to 23. For the wrath of God is revealed against are revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shewed it then, has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Godhead. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, soul, and body. Uh, you want evidence that God exists yourself. Okay? You're, you're an idiot. If you believe, and there are people that do, that you genuinely believe that man evolved over millions and billions of years. You're an idiot. <laughs> There's no nice way to put it. Okay? You're without excuse. The best evidence of God's creative whatever, you're made in the image of God. You have a spirit. You have a soul. You have a body. The body of mankind it's the most complex machine, as it were, on earth. The DNA of man is so complex. The eye with the thousands of receptors in it and stuff like that, okay? The complexity of a molecule, the complexity of the DNA. You want evidence of a creator? Look at yourself, if you can handle it, okay? Because that, when they knew God, just here, in their mind, they glorified him not as God, going down the 18 inches to the heart, okay? Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Fool says in his heart there is no God. To behave foolish or to be foolish or to behave foolishly is to behave as if you say in, their heart, in your heart there is no God. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Yes. Let, let's continue. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. See, you're without excuse because you're made in the image of God. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. And all the complexity of the body of man, you're without excuse. And see, what happens is people profess themselves to be wise, apart from God. Therefore, they become fools. And they worship man. They worship the creature. 
Now, now let's look at something interesting. Romans 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. You're without excuse. That's the only time inexcusable comes into play. You can't make an excuse. You hear the gospel of Christ and you reject it. And you stand before you but stand before the Lord at the Lord at the great white throne, you you you'll be without you'll be inexcusable. You're without excuse. You reject the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel. What is the gospel? Come, let us reason together, you and I. It's time for you to wake up, boy. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same thing. For we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? And that's not going from unbelief to belief. Okay? The devils also believe and tremble. See, this is taught, what is this talking about? Okay? 1 Corinthians 4. 1 Corinthians 4, which people who like to justify their sins love to go to. Verses 1 on verse 5. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ, Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful, But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Why didn't Paul judge his own self? Because our man's judgment, with, apart from the Lord and his perfect standard, is flawed. That's why. Therefore thou art, 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 art inexcusable, O man, where whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Two lost people, judging themselves by their own standard, is vanity. It's uh, under the uh, in the dictionary under redundant. It says to see redundant. Okay? Let's continue in 1 Corinthians 4. Paul didn't judge himself. Why? Because man's judgment apart from the perfect standard, the authorized version, and the Lord within you is flawed. Man's judgment is flawed. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not here justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. How does the Lord judge you? Through the perfect standard, the authorized version of the scriptures. That's why we are to examine ourselves. Prove our, our own selves. Be Berean. Search the scriptures daily. Okay? The Lord judges us through the scriptures. Okay? Alright? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Meaning, okay, you're not saved and you're judging each other uh, by your own standard, uh, therefore thou art inexcusable, O oh man. Two lost people, judging them on their own standards, because each one of these lost people in their own heart think they are their own God, and judging each other by their own standard. It's vanity. It's useless. Okay? It's useless. It's pathetic. That's why Paul says, through the Holy Ghost. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Until you are saved, you will not be able to judge rightly. Why? Because man's judgment, your own judgment is flawed because you are your own standard. You are your own God. The Lord saves you until the Lord come who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. So, you lost people judging each other. By, it's really interesting to see these devils that are associated around the easy believism crowd swearing at each other 
and yelling at each other, making videos against each other, and all this stuff. It's like, yeah, it's too lost, but they're lost people judging each other by their own standard. It's futile. You cannot judge rightly. You can get close, sure, but you, you missed the mark. Why? Because number one, you don't have a perfect standard, the authorized version. Number two, you don't have God within you. A lot of these guys, they say at least that they, they read the authorized version, but see, okay, they're not saved! So, therefore, judge nothing before the time. What time? Until you're saved. This is not talking about the second coming. No, judge nothing there, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, until you're saved, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise of God. And how will God do that? Through thy word I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Comprende? Okay? Comprende? All right, and while we're at it, now go back to Romans 2 and pick up at verses 12, verses 12 on to verse 16, okay? Romans 2, 12 on to verse 16. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which do the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel <laughs> Saul I have command, done the commandments of the Lord he knew he didn't he was of a guilty conscience so he was excusing himself Aaron it's like hey 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 look. Look, don't, hey, my Lord, don't let your anger be hot against me. You know how the people are. You know, they, they, they came to me and said, hey, take the gold. And, and I did the thing in the fire. And boop! Oh, hey, look what came out. Excuse me, by the way. That's the only time that appears. 2 Corinthians 12. We're almost done. 2 Corinthians 12. Now, in the context that we have seen excuse, excusing, excused. Have you noticed the context of it? 2 Corinthians 12, 14 to the close. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. And I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly, for I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Like I just said earlier, uh, I have let things slide with some brethren when I should have been like, dude, stop it. Your excuses have to end. Forgive me. Forgive me. I ain't going to do that no more. I don't know how much longer I have to live. And I have been made aware what is going to kill me. So, anyway, let's continue. But be it so. I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? Other words, Paul, Paul didn't seek your possessions, but he sought you. How many 
many of these preachers are seeking your possessions, what you have rather than you? How many of these Christians in general? Look at Ken Helvin, a perfect example. Look at Mark the Messenger, perfect example. It's a profession, not a passion to these people. Therefore, their order is all messed up. I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same, lowercase s, spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you? Now look at the context thus far. What is Paul talking about? Okay, burdensome. Did I make a gain of you? Okay, we already looked and we made reference on the first Corinthians 9 where there is a place for those who are who preach the gospel to live of the gospel, not off it. But see, that's what he's getting at. There are those out there who are living off of the gospel and not living of it. And Paul's like, hey, well, hey, our excuse is, hey, you, you know, give to this ministry. Give to this ministry. Give to, if this has been a blessing unto you, give to this ministry. Provide for the necessity of the saints. But again, you're rubbing it in the face. Are we, ex uh, uh, <laughs> again, think ye that we are excusing ourselves unto you? Well, we, we have ministry to run. We only had just, just the, the thought of this makes me want to gag. I only had so many donations. <laughs> That's disgusting. I only had so many dis donations in a certain month. That's disgusting. No, you're disgusting, pal. You're disgusting. We speak before God and Christ. But we do all things, dearly beloved, for your edifying. Not because I have a ministry to uphold. Or I have a career to uphold. For I fear, lest when I am come, I shall not find you such as I would. And that I shall be, and that I shall be found unto you, such as ye would not. Yeah. Paul didn't want to come with the rod and rebuking each other, everybody. It's like, what's wrong with you guys? He wanted to come, you know. It's like, oh, my brethren, but it's like, ah, what's wrong with you? Okay. Lest there be debates, envyings, wrath, strifes, backbitings, whisperings. Swellings, torments, and all of those are byproducts of what? Idolatry. You shall be as gods. Unless when I come again, my God humble me among you, and that I shall bewail many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have. You know, you're driving your car and you're, you're like I said, you, you, and all of a sudden um, your tire blows and you get off on the ramp and it's like, oh, great, you know. Then you call whoever, it's like, look, I'm going to be late. It's like, well, why? Well, my tire blew and that's my excuse, okay, something like that. But see, what I encounter a lot, and uh, been doing a lot of this lately especially, um, a lot of the excuses that I run into is people wanting to justify themselves, wanting to justify sin. And on that, let's close with one very poignant verse. Luke 16. Verse 15. And he said unto them, 
Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. John 5. John 5, then we'll be done. John 5, 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Now from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Excuse. Okay, where is it? Makes Excuse. Excuse. Let me see. Is it on the other page as well? No. Excuse. Um, verb transitive. Um, L. Excusio, Latin, ex and causor, to blame. See cause. Excuse. To pardon, to free from imputation, or fault or blame, to acquit of guilt. We excuse a person in our own minds when we acquit him of guilt or blame, or we excuse him by a declaration of that acquittal. Two, to pardon as a fault, to forgive entirely, or to admit to be little censurable, sens censurable, and to overlook. You know, you belch or flatch a light, say, excuse me, okay? We excuse a fault which admits of apology or extenuation, and we excuse irregular conduct when extraordinary circumstances appear to justify it. You, 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 you drive in your car, your tire blows. It's like, hey, my tire blew. I'm going to be late. Three, to free from obligation or duty. I pray thee, have me excused. We just looked at that in Luke 16. Okay? Oh, what, it was Luke uh, 14. Luke 14, excuse me. Okay? Yeah, IV, XIV. To remit, not to exact, as to excuse a for forfeiture. Johnson, to pardon, to admit an apology for, excuse some courtly strengths. Pope, to throw off an imputation by apology. Think you that we excuse ourselves to you? We just read that. Second Corinthians 12. Okay? This one does, he's done pretty good so far. To justify, to vindicate. Their, again, we already looked at this. Their thoughts uh, accusing, their thoughts accusing or else excusing one another. Romans 2. Accuse, excuse, noun. A plea offered in extenuation of a fault or irregular deportment. Apology. Every man has an excuse to offer for his neglect of duty. The debater makes excuses for delay of payment. Two, the act of excusing or apology, which I run into quite a bit. Three, that which excuses, that which extenuates or justifies a fault. Well, if you had been through what I've been through, you'd do it too. No, I wouldn't. His inability to comply with the request must be his excuse. So you got a reason. 
Are you going to make an excuse? See, Christianity blurs that line. And I'm telling you, dear friends, the context in what we looked at excuse, and we just covered all the appearances of every variation of excuse, okay? It's not, not favorable, is it? Now, like, like we said, and even Webster pointed that out, Again, you know, you're walking down the street. You got somewhere to go and then a bird poops on you. Okay, they say go get a lottery ticket then. Eh, don't do that. But it's like, oh, I got to go home and change my shirt. It's like, well, why were you late for our engagement? I, I was walking along and a bird pooped on me and I went and changed and now I'm late. Sorry. Okay, stuff like that. Okay, you're walking along and you trip and you fall, do a face plant. You, why did you do it? What was the reason for the face plant? You, you, you tripped, okay? What was the excuse? Well, my shoes were untied. Or my sandal was a little too big or whatever, okay? Those are different. But what we usually, what I usually encounter, what I usually encounter, and this is what has to stop, brethren. That which excuses, that which extenuates, extenuates, or justifies a fault. Just as if I, huh? And see, that, that's where a saint, the difference between a saint and a Christian. I know many brethren, hey, 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 hey you see this? You see this? Okay. I know many brethren who do things that they should. Yeah, you see this? You see this? Okay, trying to, trying to wean myself off of sugar. Okay, but um, a saint will go around, but eventually a saint stops. The excuses have to stop. And for those of you brothers and sisters, forgive me for my neglect. Forgive me for not being who I should have been onto some of you when you do that exact thing of excusing and justifying yourself and I knew it and I didn't say anything please forgive me that wrong please forgive me I'm sorry I repent I don't got that much time left congestive heart failure is what's going to kill me I'm doing what I can to uh, take the steps of it. And there are things that have been pressed upon me to get done, like getting to Chicago again uh, uh, for another track meeting and getting, th getting out there more, okay? But I don't got that much time left. I know where I'm going when I die. And like I said, it's going to be congestive heart failure that kills me eventually. Time is short. Going forward, dear brethren, I expect it of you from me. Expect it from of me to you. Forgive me that wrong. I repent. Okay? You and I talking, correspondence or whatever, I see it, I'm going to say it. Out of love. And I expect you to do the same to me. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I love you. Please keep us in your prayers. We need it. And we will see you in the next video whenever that may be.